Professor Helbing, what is future ICT? Our world has changed dramatically. Now we have a global exchange of people, of goods, of ideas and money. But we don't have the global system science to understand this complex world that we have created. And we need to understand the systemic risks that result from that. So this is what Future ICT wants to address with the power of future information and communication technologies. Can you explain what these future technologies will look like? We want to create new instruments actually for knowledge creation. And this includes, for example, the planetary nervous system, as we call it, a living Earth simulator and a global participatory platform, and also an innovation accelerator and exploratories for society, for the economy, for technology and the environment. Those instruments will help us uh, to get better insights and uh, explore the implications of our decisions and actions. So it will help us to take better qualified decisions. What do you mean with a planetary nervous system? The planetary nervous system is measuring the state of the world in real time. So it's turning data into information. So for example, it helps us to get a better overview of the social impact of our actions and of the social capital, not only of the environmental state. What kind of questions could the Living Earth Simulator answer? Yeah, let's take the financial crisis. Um, there are very difficult questions that have been raised. How to handle the situation with Greece? What would be the impact on the euro or even the eurozone, the European Union? Then uh, would it be good uh, to have transaction fees at the financial markets? Is high frequency trading good? or bad, or under what conditions is it good or bad? What about leverage effects, uh, short selling? There are a lot of controversial questions. We would really like to have the tools uh, to take better informed decisions to understand what is going on in these systems. So we want to create a policy wind tunnel, as we call it. It would allow us really to test different scenarios. You know, with short selling, without short selling, with transaction fees, without, and basically compare what is coming out of this. So would the computer tell decision makers what to do? No, not at all. It's not a supercomputer that's uh, determining a solution and that then would uh, be put into action. It's rather an instrument that allows you to explore difficult situations from many different perspectives to get a better picture. How will it be possible to get data of everything that is happening and to feed it into a gigantic computer simulation? This is actually not the plan. Science is the art of approximation about um, coming up with simple models that would uh, describe complex relationships. And for that very reason, we don't want to have a one-to-one -one mapping of the world. When we want to orient ourselves in the world, we actually use maps and not photographs. Maps are simplifications of the world and they help us to orient. In the same way will simplifications in the scientific description of the world help us to get an understanding of what is going on in the world. Isn't it much simpler to simulate fluids or the weather than to simulate society? People react to forecasts while the weather doesn't. We don't claim that it would be as simple to simulate society as simulating the weather, which, by the way, is complicated enough. Uh, but that's also the reason why it took so long, actually, to come up with computational social science. But now we have models for social cooperation, for conflicts, for social norms, for opinion formation and these kinds of activities, and those models can be combined and they give us a better understanding of what is going on. And the investments made into weather forecasts pay off multiple times. Wouldn't this nevertheless require to forecast the future? No, it doesn't, because um, it's really all about adaptiveness, about the ability to flexibly respond to the situation we are confronted with. 
And Future ICT is creating those tools that will help us to do so. So could Future ICT lead to more sustainability? Yeah, this is definitely one of the goals of Future ICT. We want uh, to create instruments that support collective awareness of the implications of our decisions and actions. We want to be able to quantify social capital, such as trust and solidarity, for example, which is the basis of economic value generation, but today is not well enough protected. Futuricity incorporates a global participatory platform. What does this mean? Can everyone participate? Yes, that's the idea, to have tools that are available for everybody, such as everybody is using Google today to find information. So this is really an open platform. We think it will be a new information ecosystem that we are creating that allows everybody also, non-government organizations, individuals, companies, whatever, uh, to use this information platform to inform themselves, to interact and come up with their own projects. Why are the social sciences so important for future ICT? First of all, many of the problems we have today have a social character. Uh, when it comes to conflict and war, or also to energy consumption, to global warming, all of this involves human behavior. And so we need to understand it. But also future information communication technologies are more and more socially interactive systems. Supercomputers that do financial trading, for example, they create a picture of the surrounding world and take autonomous decisions based on this information and the projection into the future. They are communicating with each other. That means those systems have more and more features of humans. And as a result, also, the interaction will lead to all the problems that we find in society if those systems are not well designed. So it will lead to coordination problems, breakdown of cooperation, to conflict, um, war, crime, and so on. So we really need to understand how these phenomena come about in order to avoid serious problems in our future systems. Futuricity has many ambitious goals. How can you manage a project of this size? Well, first of all, we have created a vision, a vision that uh, convinces people, many people. We have received support by now by about a thousand experts worldwide. We have the best European academic institutions on board. We have new scientific journals, and uh, within just one year, it's being recognized that a project like this is being needed. We need uh, to look at how society is changing in the face of big data. So I believe this project will be done because it's needed. What about the supercomputer centers? Supercomputer centers are involved into the future ICT project as well. So there are a number of centers all over Europe that have signed up uh, that are interested to be involved in this project. And we imagine that about 10 to 20% of their capacity will be used for this project. But not only this, also mobile devices, smartphones will also be very important for our project as a device that is basically collecting data about social activity patterns, if people agree with this. Uh, but also to forward them useful information for their orientation. What about privacy? Isn't it at risk when mining data from mobile phones? Well, it depends on how you do it. That's why Future ICT is very much investing into privacy respecting data mining technologies. One point is aggregation. That means you don't save individual information, but you sum it up over many people, so you could not determine the individual anymore. Um, then another thing is that you falsify it, basically you add some noise to it. Uh, you, would uh, encode information and would uh, apply many different ways of 
getting rid of the sensitive part of the information. Wouldn't Futuricity itself create a big brother watching us? No, not at all. In contrast uh, to business and also um, secret services, Future ICT is not interested in tracking individuals. We want to understand macroscopic interdependencies, that means how environment impacts economic systems and the other way around, and how that interacts with society. What will be the biggest challenge for Future ICT? The biggest challenge for Future ICT is actually to change the perspective that we have on our complex systems today. We have very much connected them by information and communication technologies, but also in many other ways. So we have today a global exchange of people, goods, information, money, and that is really changing the way our world behaves. These strongly coupled systems often feature cascading effects that can lead to extreme events that get out of control and these kind of things. So if you want to change this and understand it in the first place, then we need to change our perspective from a component-oriented view to an interaction-oriented view. The interactions create self-organization and sometimes very surprising or even paradoxical emergent phenomena, new properties of the system that can be really not only unexpected but also harmful for society, so-called systemic shifts. And uh, if we want uh, to deal with these kind of things, we need to understand the impact of interactions on the systemic behavior. It's almost like this change in perspective that we had from a geocentric to a heliocentric worldview. I believe this project will be done because it's needed.